Hello and welcome back. And in this lesson, we are going to focus on IAM initial setup and configuration. The topics we're going to touch on here are IAM best practices, multi-factor authentication, how to create an admin IAM user and group, and how to create an IAM password policy. So the first thing I wanna do here in the AWS console is once again, go into IAM. And what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the initial configuration for identity and access management. So a word you're going to hear a lot while using AWS is AWS best practices. And these are guidelines that recommend settings, configurations, and architecture for the purpose of having a high level of security, accessibility, and efficiency. Now, when we create a new AWS root account, it is best practice to complete the tasks listed in IAM under security status. So if you see here under security status, we have five tasks. The first of which is already checked off for us. And that is because when we create just a base user account, like we did a few videos ago, there were no root access keys that were generated. So that is already checked off as deleted because there were never any to begin with. However, in order to satisfy AWS best practices, we do now wanna go through and complete the other items on this list. First, we will activate multi-factor authentication on our root account. So for multi-factor authentication, let's first discuss what multi-factor authentication is. And as stated here, MFA is an abbreviation for multi-factor authentication, and it is an additional layer of security on your root account that is provided by a third party. And it takes the form of a continually changing random six digit code that you will need to input in addition to your password when logging into your root account. So how do you get the MFA code? Well, there's two ways. One is through a virtual MFA device, meaning either a smartphone or tablet, for which a commonly used app for both iOS and Android is Google Authenticator. Another option is a hardware key fob, which is a small physical device with a display that can be attached to your keychain. And if that is the option that you like, then you can order that directly from Amazon Web Services. For this particular example here, we are going to create a virtual multi-factor authentication device using a smartphone. So to quickly kind of touch on how multi-factor authentication works from a conceptual standpoint, when you go to log into your root account, you generally provide a username and password, and then you would click accept and you would log in. This puts another step in between where we still have to put in our username and password. However, after that, we're going to be prompt for the MFA code. We then have to go to either the key fob and get the MFA code, or if we have it set up on a smartphone or tablet, we can open up that application, which may be Google Authenticator, and get the MFA code, input that in, then we're able to log into the account. So it creates an extra layer of security where if somebody were to discover or hack or get into our information and get the username and password, they still would not be able to access the account unless they also had the multi-factor authentication code. So to set up MFA, we can click this down arrow here and follow the instructions that are provided to us by AWS. So we'll click here on Manage MFA. We're going to select on a virtual MFA device, but if you wanted to order the hardware device, you could click on that here and follow the next steps. So for a virtual MFA device, we'll click on that. It says to activate the virtual MFA device, you must first install an AWS MFA compatible application on the user smartphone, PC, or other device. I use Google Authenticator. I already have that set up on my phone. So I'm going to proceed from here with those steps already completed. Next, what it's going to ask us to do is open up the Google Authenticator on your phone or on your device and to snap using the camera the QR code that has been presented. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, that was just scanned and saved. I know you can't see that I'm doing it, but believe me that I did just scan the QR code. 
I now need to put in two successive authentication codes that are presented to me on my phone. So there's the first one. And these codes rotate every 10 seconds or so. So I need to wait a few seconds for the next one to be presented. Okay, I have my two codes, so I'm now going to click to activate it. So good, so the MFA device was successfully associated. Click finish. And then if I refresh here, we should now see that we have activated the MFA on the root account. So perfect, so now whenever I go to log in to my root account, I will need to put in the username and password and then open up Google Authenticator on my phone and pull out the MFA code and put that in as part of the login process. Next, we wanna take a look at creating individual IAM users. So what we wanna realize here is that AWS best practice is to never use your root account for day-to-day -day use. So the account that we're logged in with right now isn't what we should, even as the account owner, be using on a day-to-day -day basis. So what we need to do is create another user for ourselves and give that user administrative rights. So for this, we can just follow along and go to manage users. We're going to create a new user. I'll call that user Tom, that's me. And I'm going to uncheck generate an access key for each user right now because I don't need that right now. And I'm going to touch on what that is later, but I'm just going to skip those steps for the, for the moment. Now that I have my user, I want to click on my user and I'm going to add the administrator access policy to this user. Now, I am going to cover this in more detail in the next few lessons, but for now, I'm just kind of going through this somewhat quickly so that I can check off these best practices and move on to talking specifically about users, roles, policies, and groups in successive lessons. So here I'm going to attach that policy to the user, Tom and the user Tom now has full administrative access. I then wanna to go to security credentials. And for here, I want to click on manage password because I need to create a password for myself for this account so I can log in. So I'm gonna assign a custom password. So now I can just create any password that I want for the user Tom, which is what I will use going forward. Okay, now if I go back to dashboard here, we do see that that is now checked. So we have created an individual IAM user and we gave that user administrative access. So as the account owner, we can log into a non-root user account and still have full access to modify, change, or use any aspect of the AWS account. Great, so now that that is done, we wanna move on to user groups to assign permissions. So. With user groups, it can often be more convenient and efficient to set up groups and assign permissions like we just did for the user Tom to the group rather than manage each user individually. So to do that, again, we'll click on this particular item and click on manage groups. I'm gonna create a new group. I'll call this group admin, click next. And now I need to assign a policy to that group, which I'll assign the administrator access policy and create the group. So now I have a group which currently has no users in it, but that group has assigned to it the administrator access policy. And again, I'm going to go through this all in detail in the following videos. Going back to the IAM dashboard, we now see that that is checked off. Last, what we wanna take a look at now is how to apply an IAM password policy and talk specifically about what an IAM password policy is. So a password policy dictates the format and expiration rules that must be followed when a user creates or modifies their password. These rules include password length, case requirements, number requirements, non-alphanumeric requirements, password expiration, password reuse, 
user rights to change their own password and administrative reset requirements. So basically, what we're doing here is, I'm sure there's been many times in your life when you've gone to a website and they say, ask you to create a password, you type in a password and they're like, it's too short, it needs to be eight characters, or you need a, a number or a symbol in the password. That's what we're doing here. We're creating the rules that need to be followed when our users create passwords for themselves. So we could do something like require at least one uppercase letter to be in the password, require at least one lowercase, require at least one number, require at least one non-alphanumeric character. And what these do is obviously this strengthens the security of the password that our users are going to be creating. You can also put in features like enable password expiration. So this is something you could use if you wanted to have even higher security where you could say after say every 30 days or after every 90 days, all passwords would expire and users would have to create new passwords. You could also prevent password reuse for, let's say, five times, which means that the user can't use the same password until they've used five different passwords. And then there's also the option for a password expiration requires administrator reset. So you can choose whatever rules you like for your specific password policy. There are no specific requirements, except that you do have to set this up with some sort of rules. And that all depends on the level of security that you want will dictate the password strength. So I'm gonna leave these as follows and I will click on apply password policy. And if you like, you can always delete the password policy, come back in here and change it in the future. So back to the dashboard, we now see that that is checked off. And for us here, we have now completed all of the tasks and we are done with the IAM initial configuration. And with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.